Welcome to this edition of Adopt a Pet. This is Stacy, and I'm Janice. We've got a great lineup for you today, and we're starting with a kitty cat. Sure. Who's very excited? Thanks. Because we had a dog in her earlier. To oh, beautiful. Get me all excited. Oh, you got her purring. Yeah. You got her purring. She purrs pretty easily. We just named her Mina, by the oh. way. We had some customers come in, and we couldn't figure out a name, so we had them name her for us. Um, we think Amina is probably about two years old. She's a beautiful medium hair torty. Um, she came to us as a stray, and she's available for adoption because I think yesterday was her seventh day here at the shelter. Oh, good. So she's only $78 to adopt. That includes her spaying, her microchip, and her first vaccination. And she, you can tell that someone really loved her. I mean, she's been handled a lot, and she's very sweet and likes people. And she's a big purr, huh? Oh, look at her beautiful green eyes. Look at her. We have lots of adult cats right now available for adoption, just as beautiful as Mina. Almost just as beautiful as Mina. And well, it's really important that we get our adult cats homes too. You yeah. know, I mean, if people wait for the kittens to come, but you know, our adult cats need homes too. They do. They are just they as do. sweet and lovable and in need of a place to curl up. Yes. Hey, you match my uniform. You match <laughs> well, there my you go. uniform. I just have to hold you all day long, huh? Such a <laughs> this is, that's girl. worked for me. A good girl, but that seventy-eight dollars adoption fee is is just a really good deal uh, all the way around for the spaying and the microchip and the first vaccination. It's it's quite a deal. But, uh, yeah, we're not in it for the money. We're just we're in it to find animals like Mina at home. Yeah, good. Yeah, and try to keep them healthy and yeah. It's very sweet. She's settled in. She, she says I'm good. Girl. All right. Come on, baby. She says no oh, wait. I go. settled in. <laughs> I'll bet this means you're going to bring that big white dog back in here now. <laughs> I know, huh? We're going to get Mina secure before we uh, bring out Penelope. Okay. Oh, she, did, did you hear her? I said her name and she started crying. Penelope, on you're on, girl. Come on. Hi. Hi, sweetheart. Hello, love. Hello, love. Oh, hi. I actually don't know if we've shown Penelope before. I love the spot right above yeah. the tail. Yeah. <laughs> I know it's so pretty. I know, I know. So we're thinking that Penelope has got a little bit of uh, Dalmatian in her. She's got a little bit of pit. She's got a little bit of lab. Um, she's a puppy. She's only 10 months old. And uh, she's very, very energetic and very sweet. Very affectionate and loving dog. Uh, she loves other dogs. Her favorite thing to do is just go back out in the play yard and just bounce off the walls with other big dogs. Yeah. Yeah. If we need another, if we need a dog worn out, uh, <laughs> tired out, we send in Penelope. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. She's, uh, she's the, the fluffer, if you will. She goes out and uh, gets them all, gets them all tired out, and then it's nice too. It's a nice exercise for her. Um, now, you've shown her with children, right? Yeah. Like, seven, eight-year-old, she did wonderful, was just really just focused her whole time on the child. Um, and just wanted to play. She loves playing fetch. She's a smart girl. She's a good girl. She is a smart girl, but she does need some training, as you can see. And she's pretty strong. I mean, Don't she's not. We all, baby. She's Don't not we as all. strong as like a Dan or a Joker, but she is pretty strong. And uh, she's muscle, and she, you know, she needs runs and she needs walks or hikes, whatever. She definitely needs a yard. She would not be a good apartment dog at all. <laughs> no, uh, no. Unless you have a three thousand square foot apartment. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or unless you can take her out five, six times a day. Yeah. But um, yeah, she uh, she's only one hundred and four to adopt. That includes her spang and everything else. And she's actually been here for a really long time. Oh. So, um, and you know, she jumps up on the cage. She doesn't bark aggressively. She actually just wants to play and she engages people. But I think they look at her and they think that she's gonna be too much. And uh, and of course we want the right people to get her. We want somebody that knows what's gonna, what it entails and that yeah. they can handle her. But uh, she's she's wonderful. And you see when she comes down, she's just, she's well behaved. She's a good girl, huh? Haha, uh -huh, I just said well behaved about you. I did, I did, that's funny. Can you even use that in that's a sentence? Funny. <laughs> I didn't think I'd ever say that. No, I didn't. All right, but yeah, that's Penelope. And she's a puppy. Come on, girl. Thank you, Marissa. She gets is so the, sweet. Marissa gets the awesome job of bringing Dan in on the show in a little while. Oh, so. boy, we can't wait for Dan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> highlight of the show. Oh, Look you're this baby. 
Oh, you are hey, cute. Baby. <laughs> oh. Hi, baby. Well, you're a baby. Hi, Where are baby. you a little terrier? Hi. Hi, Hi you're a terrier of some kind, huh? Oh. You're such a good dog. Yeah, we were thinking uh, border terrier. It's funny because this little boy's got um, he's got Yorkie kind of colors, but yeah, definitely got that border terrier face. Hi, sweetheart. Um, this little dog is available uh, this coming Saturday, and uh, is only about eight weeks old. It's a little boy. Aww. We named him Harley, and the reason why we named him Harley is the gentleman that found him. Uh, brought him in on his motorcycle. But that was fun. <laughs> wow. yeah. So, uh, yeah, brought him in on his motorcycle, so we named him Harley. I know it's a cliche, but, yeah, it is what it is. We could have named him Kawasaki or Honda, or, but it just happened to be Harley, so that's You're his name. sweet. Yeah. You are sweet. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, this Saturday, and uh, dog will only be $98, not four months old yet, so not old enough for a rabies vaccination, so, of course, we wouldn't charge you for one of those. So $98, that includes his neutering, his puppy shots, and his microchip. Oh, he is as cute as cute gets. He's he really, not going to really be very is. big. He's just so cute. You're just so cute. <laughs> But um, came in and was obviously a little bit scared because of the way he got here and everything. And it took, yeah. And it took, it was funny because he's so little, uh, but he was very um, kind of growly and scared. And we were like, really, you're not supposed to be like this. You're really young. But it took him about a day to come out of it and realize that we weren't here to hurt him. And then he was like, okay, I'm out of my shell. So, yeah, he's raring to go. He's a, he's a sweet little dog. He just needs to be socialized and uh, with kids and other dogs right off the bat. It's really important to do this young. So. But he's very cute. Yeah. And he could be yours. He could be yours on Saturday morning at 10 o'clock. There you go. Hi, baby. Thanks, David. All right. Thank you. He is very cute. He is really cute. There's another little girl in the cage with him, too, that um, she didn't come in with him, but they, she's actually half his size. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Same kind of dog? Oh, my goodness. Up. Look at you. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Libby. Baby, look at you. She's cute, huh? Look at you. Like she's one of those dogs that you see in like the, um, oh, like the Charlie Chaplin movies. I mean, she's so cute. Look at how cute she is. Look at that face. Look at that face. But um, this little dog is Libby. Going? She's going? a Jack Russell mix. Would you rather? Um, that? We think she's pretty young, between one and two years old. A uh, little girl, and she's great with other little dogs. We have her house with another little dog right now. Um, uh, she's not high strung, but a little hyper. So just keep in mind that she is a Jack Russell mix and some kind, maybe border terrier. I don't know, but she's got those terriers in here. So keep in mind. Oh, just they gotta because, have something to do. Yeah, and just because she's small doesn't mean that she's gonna be okay <laughs> put into an apartment situation. She's got to have a job to do. She's got to have some training. She's got to not be bored because anything that's mixed with the Jack Russell, it'll be a nightmare if they're bored. You leave them home for work you know, nine, ten hours, and she's got nothing to do. Um, so there goes your shoe. So keep that in mind. Yeah. <laughs> keep that in mind. And uh, lots of chew toys and, and actually lots of training. And, and uh, like a daycare is a really, really good idea, especially for little dogs that are going to be by themselves. Um, but That's she, why I always got two dogs. Yeah, and you know, <laughs> it's really, and especially the little dogs, it's not that much of a difference. You're going to have two little dogs. They can keep each other company while you can leave for the day and go to work, and you don't have yeah. to worry about your dog being alone. They can eat out of the same bowl. They sleep yeah. in the same bed. I mean, it's always good. I mean, I know that there's one dog families out there, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that, but if you do work long hours, it's always really, really good I'd to have, have a companion. I'd have 20 if dog. the law would allow. And we yeah, will set you up with a companion. Let me <laughs> tell you. You bring your dog here and we will see who's a good match yes. and you will walk out the door with that dog. Um, just bring your dog in. We'll introduce them and make sure that they're okay. And well, then you'll never have to worry about another thing ever again in your life. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah. Magic <laughs> yeah. Okay. Why not? And so baby. Oh. <laughs> Very sweet. I love the terrier breeds though. Yeah. Uh, they're they're tenacious, but they're super super smart, and they're they're just nice dogs. We've got Bugsy coming on. David, hi Bugsy. <laughs> hi Bugsy. Hey, baby. Hi. Oh, okay. She's okay. She's okay. I promise. She's he's like, who are you? Hi. 
We've never formally met, have okay. we? So Bugsy's got what we call the boxer cauliflower mm -hmm. ear. Okay. Okay. There you go. See? It doesn't, it, that's not a natural thing. Something happened along the lines where he got some, maybe some kind of ear infection and it uh, it got cauliflowered. Uh, see, I personally think we should have named him Mickey Rourke. <laughs> you know, and what's funny is Mickey Rourke is a giant Chihuahua fan. He's always had Chihuahuas and he's very, very big into rescue. So maybe we can get him out here to, to adopt Bugsy because he's a good, he's a good guy and he's all about the animals. But um, Bugsy is um, a couple years old, probably between two and four years old. Bugsy is amazing with other little dogs. And if you remember Sunny, our smiling Chihuahua, he was uh, Sunny's roommate for, for many months. Oh, wow. Um, Sunny has since been adopted by um, the gentleman at Doggy Avenue where they're going to try to adopt him out no, from their going? shop. Where are you going? And um, where are you going, Bugs? Where are you going? He's, he's getting loose. But he's high energy. He's not a huge barker, but he's very sweet. He's very affectionate. You're going to get all tangled kids. in your leash. We have shown him with kids. Now, Bugsy is one out of five. What are you doing? He's all tangled. Bugsy is one out of five chihuahuas that were actually abandoned in an apartment. Hang on. And um, they, what happened is they left him in the little back patio, and they moved out, and they left him. Aww. So we got a call from the neighbor. The neighbor rounded them up and they brought them in. And Bugsy's the only one left out of those five. And actually, Bugsy turned out to be the nicest one out of all of them. But uh, he needs a new home, and he's been here for many, many, many months. So it's it's his turn. And I think he's adorable. <laughs> Doesn't you think he's kind of cute? Hey, Hi, buddy. You're a good boy. But uh, Bugsy is available for adoption now. He's only 104 to adopt. No, I'm sorry. Bugsy's on the $20 list. He's a $20 <laughs> dog. Item. You cannot beat that. $20 includes his neutering, includes his microchips, and includes his vaccination. And um, it also might even include a training package. So he he's wonderful. Please come down and, and check him out. And he would actually make a good apartment dog. Very cool. Good boy. All right, buddy. <laughs> My little squirmer. Yeah, he's a little squirmy today, isn't he? <laughs> All right, you ready? <laughs> All right. Ready? I'm ready. Everybody ready? Oh, oh. <laughs> and there he goes. There goes Marissa. Hi. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. Yeah, come here. Hi. That's actually oh, the a soft boy. <laughs> Who is this on this? Can you sit down? He's a sound God, he's just a muscle. He's all muscle. Okay. <laughs> he just can't sit still. He can't. can't for two seconds. He just have to walk. He can't. And the more I Girl, do, and, and I will this. tell you, I do know what I'm doing, but the more I correct him, the more he just revolts. Yeah. So it's just like not even worth it. So we're going to let him chew on the leash. We're going to let him jump. <laughs> well, also because we're lazy. But hey, Dan, come here. Dan is a puppy. He's one year old. He is stop it. Dan is our out of control bundle of love. But he needs a firm hand, some consistent training. And when we say firm hand, we mean like somebody who's strong enough to handle a dog like this. And uh, even I would question myself at this point. Well, like, and I, you know, and I, I may be somebody that's had some experience training dogs, yes, I think, at this point, too. Definitely. Who's had some experience training a dog with some high energy. Because Dan is high energy. <laughs> He's high energy. He is still a puppy. And he is so strong. He is a neuter male, and he actually was adopted many months ago to a family who basically said all the right things to us, and we were very happy with the adoption, and it, it, it turned out he was too much for them, and we get that. And uh, so he was turned back in because he just ripped up their yard and everything. Oh, right? down would be too, yeah, yeah, too much for Rose. He barked because he had separation anxiety. Yeah. He ripped stuff up in the backyard. He would benefit from being with another dog, preferably a female that is around his size. Um, he needs somebody who's active. He does not need to be left in the backyard all day while you're, while you're gone. He can be while you're at work, but he really truly needs some attention before you go and when you get home. Um, he's good on hikes. He is good with most other dogs. We suggest no cats for him. And he's, believe it or not, he's actually okay with older kids <laughs> that are experienced. But if your kid is frail he's not and is right. prone to be knocked down, we don't suggest it. Uh, yeah. 
also we don't suggest him for anybody that has to take blood thinners. <laughs> 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 Stupid dog. I love you, bro. Stop it. Okay, so Dan, again, he's a $20 dog. Gee, I wonder why. <laughs> he's a $20 dog. <laughs> Available for adoption now. Please come down and meet him. I know we're going to find the right the right people for him. The and, right person's out yeah, there. Because he is a love. He's lab, Sharpe, maybe a little bit of pit. He's, he's a sweet dog. And let me just add to you, when I was coming in, waiting, just standing still trying to talk to a customer, he was doing this. But as soon as I just started walking and getting him out there, he was fine. He does not do this all the time. It's just when he's bored. Um, so he's, he's not a leash him. chewer unless he's bored. But if you <laughs> hike him and walk him and say, he's great. And that's the other thing you need to understand, you know, is these are shelter dogs. They spend a, a good percentage of the time in their pen here at the shelter. And this is such a treat for him to be outside of his pen, to be a dog, you know. So, so he's exhibiting all of his fun dog stuff right for, right for you on the show right now. But, um, but that's just how it is, you know. I mean, he, he's not like this all the time. It's just he's so happy to be out and so happy to be with people and be the center of attention that... He just wants to enjoy every moment of that right now. And he's showing off a little bit. So he's just showing <laughs> off. All right, Dan. But you can see he's not mean. He's not no, no. aggressive. He's not, not any of those things. He's just playing. <laughs> <laughs> he's a lot to play with, though. <laughs> so if you're looking for that kind of dog. You're embarrassing me. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I, I, I tried to get him unwrapped. I couldn't do it. <laughs> He's fine now. It's got to be used to. It's got to be. Well, anybody that knows me knows I I failed dog training with every dog I've ever had. So. Well, my last dog training, they gave me a certificate to get me out of the class. So. If we give you one, will you leave? <laughs> yeah, I've, been, I've been there. I've been there. <laughs> thank, you, thank you, lady, but yeah. yeah. That's our last and, animal today. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, we did that on purpose, the last one. <laughs> well, well, that was exciting. <laughs> well, we really don't have a tip of the week for you this week, but we do want to talk to you a little bit about our um, wild animal population up in our mountains. Yeah. Um, we have, we do have indigenous wild animals in Burbank. You All know, kinds. People don't think about it, but we have uh, bobcats and, and coyotes and, and mountain lions and, and raccoons and possums, possums and all kinds of stuff up there. And people don't think about it. And then Pete, there are the people that think they're cute. Yeah. So they leave food or out. Or starving. Or which starving, they're not. which they're not. Um, and they leave food out for them, and then, then they come down, and then when their food's not there, they'll eat the neighborhood pet or something. So here's the deal. Do not ever leave food out for the wildlife. It's not good for the wildlife because they need to eat the food that's out there in nature that was intended for them because it's healthier for them. You're doing um, them harm. By you're doing them harm, and you're not doing the neighborhood pets any good by bringing them down into the neighborhood. Yeah. And actually, you're not doing them any good because they're not eating the proper diet that they need. And you're exposing them to risks that they shouldn't be exposed to either, like the potential to being hit by a car or or a neighborhood you know, dog. You know, yeah. there's dogs that could kill could the, the kill, possums kill, or the yeah. The, and the other big thing that I'm seeing so much about right now is mountain lions. Mm -hmm. And here, we have mountain lions. We have bobcats. Bobcats are small. They're a little bit larger than a house cat, about a medium-sized, a little smaller than a medium-sized yeah. dog kind of little thing. Little spotty they have and stripy. Pointy ears with a lot of fur on the end of the ears and bobtails. Bobtail, they have a short tail that you probably won't even see. Mountain lions are huge, yeah. and they have a long tail. Very long tail, and they're the size of a mastiff dog, so keep that in mind calling to to report anything like that there's there's a real big difference and uh, you want to be real specific when you when you see them and if now you, we don't have a lot of coyotes right now because it's just not coyote see, season they're all busy having they're little coyotes meeting, yeah they're meeting us. each yeah. other they're at socials right now so you're yeah. not going to see a lot of them yeah. you will in about 92 days <laughs> yeah, as soon as the uh, gestation period is yeah. over the coyotes will start reappearing yeah um, because they'll need to feed their pups, but... Um. You know, with the mountain lion, um, 
obviously you never ever ever want to approach a mountain lion if you're on a hike if you um, if you're up in the hills walking or whatever you want to make yourself if you come face to face with the mountain lion you want to make yourself as big as possible you want to make yourself as threatening as possible if you have a jacket on you want to take that jacket and put it up way over your head make yourself six seven feet tall if you need to if you have a small child with you you pick up that child but you don't you don't turn around and bend over in front of the mountain lion you want to kind of grab the kid sideways, always keep an eye on the mountain lion, and put the child on your shoulder if possible. Yeah. I don't care if it's a 10 year old, if you can put it well, on your shoulder, run. put them on your shoulder. A run don't is, turn around yeah, and run. Make Absolutely them think that's your not. prey. Exactly. But, yeah. Make yourself big, make yourself threatening to, to that mountain lion. We haven't had a lot of encounters, face-to-face -face encounters. Obviously, there's a lot of encounters with, with coyotes and bobcats, but you know, usually if you make a, a large sound or throw something in a general direction, like a pine cone, they'll usually run away, especially the bobcats. It's the mountain lions that you really want to be careful. And if you see a mountain lion or if you encounter a mountain lion, please call us right away. If it's after closing, call, um, call the Burbank Police Department and we'll get dispatched out and we'll, we'll check out the situation because we do want to know where they are and when, when they're seen. But be a responsible pet owner. Keep your pets uh, safe. Yeah. Um, keep your gates closed. Keep your pets in the house. If you're going to go outside in the early morning hours, or the evening hours, go outside with your pet. Um, if it's going to be out in the open, um, don't leave food outside. Uh, for your pet or any, because you, you're leaving it out there for every other animal out there, too. It includes too. water, too, <clears throat> folks. It includes water. Yep. Because mm -hmm. that's a water source from them. They have water up on the hills, and they have food up on the hills. And that's what makes them indigenous to Burbank, because there is a huge food source for all of those species. So keep that in mind. They're not starving. You don't need to feed them. Yeah, you don't need to yeah. feed them. Even so if they look skinny and mangy, they're not. They're fine. Yes. So keep your pets safe. They are out there. We do share of uh, the Verdugo Hills with a, a variety of creatures. So keep your pets safe and don't uh, leave food out for the animals in the hills. So there you have it. Uh, we got all kinds of pets here. We have a lot of adult cats looking for homes and dogs. So please come down and see us. Make us your first uh, stop when you're looking for that animal to add to your home. Remember when you adopt a pet, you adopt a friend. Thanks for joining us today.